Here's the photo transfer to stone method using Estesol. We're going to be doing this on this particular press, but generally speaking you can do this on any litho press. We'll start with our freshly grained stone up on the press bed. Since not all of you watching are going to be familiar with using the litho press, we're going to go over a few basics. First we need a scraper bar that is suitable, appropriate for the width of our stone. Here's a 10 inch scraper bar. And I can check by holding it above my stone and ensuring that I've got about a one inch border of stone on either side. You don't want your scraper bar to overhang if possible. And here you can see using a simple thumb screw that I can place the scraper bar into position and lock it there. Here's another view. In this one I've got a piece of paper towel holding the bottom because it's kind of greasy. It saves me having to clean my hands every time. And speaking of grease, being careful to ensure that none of that grease ends up on my stone, I can roll the bed and the stone underneath the scraper bar to ensure that left to right I'm relatively lined up. So next, before we do any fun transfer stuff, we have to set the pressure. So I put a couple of pieces of newsprint on my clean stone to protect it, and then I grab a tympan that is suitably sized and place it on top of the stone, and roll the bed so that the stone is directly underneath the scraper bar. From here, I'll engage the clutch, on this particular press, it's a long handle. Here you can see me operating the clutch, and in fact, the bed moves up and down to engage pressure. On other presses, the carriage itself from the top moves up and down. And now reaching to the top of the press, turning this handle clockwise, I lower the chassis, which effectively increases the pressure. I will do this until the scraper bar comes in contact with the tin bin. Then I will release the clutch, and I will turn it one additional quarter of a turn that's a general printing pressure as well as the pressure we need for this particular transfer method. I can pull the clutch down one more time to ensure that it does travel freely before pulling the bed out of the way and moving on to the next step. The kind of transfer we're going to be doing here has come out of a laser printer or a standard photocopy. This won't work with inkjet. The key to this whole process is the use of something called Estesol 150. Estesol 150 is a synthetic ester fluid. That is, in this case, we use it to replace more conventional, unhealthy VOCs, the kinds of solvents that you might have in your granddad's garage, but we do not want to be breathing here in the printmaking studio. Wearing gloves and eye protection, we place a small amount on the surface of the stone and begin moving it around. We don't douse the stone in this liquid. We don't want the stone soaking wet. We want to add small amounts at a time, as I'm doing here. I'm using a little cloth that was kept in a plastic bag with the Estesol, and we can use this cloth over and over again. You'll see, as you begin to feel like you're running out, as the stone is getting a bit drier, you can add more Estesol. But again, we don't start with a large quantity, like a quarter of a cup on the surface of the stone. We only put on enough to get started and then add more as we need to. Let's continue to watch this in real time. It's important to point out here that I'm not covering the entire stone as well. I'm really only placing the Estesol where the transfer is going to go. So if you happen to be transferring something small, you only need to place Estesol in a small area. So next thing, we place our transfer face down. The other thing to note about our transfer, aside from the fact that it came from a laser copier or a photocopier, is that it is right reading and positive. That is, the transfer itself on the sheet of paper looks how I would like it to look once we've actually printed this as a lithograph. If I had text on here, for example, I would be able to read the text on the paper. It reverses itself as it transfers to the stone. So the thing that you're watching me do here is I've taken my rag, I've added a little bit of more Estesol 150 to the rag, and I'm just running it over the transfer. I don't want to shift or smudge the transfer at this point. So in order to protect our tympan and our press, we use a piece of clear mylar over top of the transfer, and then a couple of sheets of newsprint, and then our tympan, and then we're going to run it through the press, almost as if we were printing. I say almost because when we're printing on a litho press, typically we put our tympan in place, apply some grease where the scraper bar will come in contact with the tympan, slide the bed into position, lower the pressure, and crank through once, releasing the pressure, 
and pulling the press bed back towards us before revealing what's underneath. With the transfer method, we are actually going to be doing those first few steps, that is putting the grease on the tympan, moving the bed into place, applying the pressure, and then cranking the press, just like this. However, instead of stopping, we are actually going to run it in reverse. And we're going to do this back and forth and back and forth. So a total of two times. If we did this extra back and forth while we were printing, we would be in grave danger of spoiling our impression. But the nature of this transfer method is such that having the press go back and forth, having a little extra pressure ensures that the image moves from the paper to our stone. Let's watch the action of this press back and forth from a couple of different angles. Since this press is over 100 years old, it has its idiosyncrasies. The gearing is pretty primitive and the press does tend to wobble as it moves across its center of balance from end to end. But despite that, it's a very functional, very user-friendly little press. Now that we've seen it go back and forth a few times and seen it from different angles, we are going to release the pressure and then using the spatula, remove some grease from the end of the tympan and under the scraper bar and pull the bed back into its resting position. Here I'll scrape up the excess grease, move it to the starting position. That's assuming that I'm planning to use this again shortly. And I'll move the tympan out of the way. At this stage, we want to check very carefully to see how our transfer has done. So I'll move the newsprint and the mylar and then I'll take the end of my knife to pick up the edge of my transfer and peel it back very, very carefully and very, very slowly. I want to see if the image has transferred. And we are in luck with our transfer here. It seems to have transferred really, really well. But if it didn't, I could lay my transfer back down. I wouldn't have moved it right off of the stone, but I could lay it back down and I could increase the pressure on the press slightly and send it back through. I wouldn't add any new Estesol at this point. Really, whatever is on there is sufficient. The last thing I need to do to this stone before I could actually etch it and potentially print it is to heat set the transfer in place and to remove any excess Estesol. So I'm using a heat gun here. This is not a hair dryer. This is a heat gun. This is the kind of thing you might use to strip paint in an old house. And as a result, it is really hot. You have to be very careful when you use this. And it takes at least 10 minutes to get to this point. Moving back and forth and side to side, you'll see that the stone will eventually return to its original color. But I've got a little extra work to do on the left there, so I'll carry on off camera. Now I want to put away all the materials I've used. The Estesol goes back in its bag, sealed, and I can use this rag again. So I can place it in a sealed bag along with the Estesol and put it back on the shelf along with the heat gun. The other usual cleanup rules when printing and lithography apply put the extra grease back in its container and we're going to wipe down the tin pin. You don't have to make it perfect but a blue shop towel and a minute or two of scrubbing should remove 90% of the grease. Hang up your tin pin and the hard work is done. And now we have a look at our stone. The transfer went well and we could begin the process of etching but at this point, we can also add conventional lithographic drawing materials to this stone, giving us seemingly endless creative possibilities.